We're back now with a controversial story out of Delaware. That's where 16-year-old Amy Joyner Francis died after being attacked in a bathroom by several of her classmates. The cause of death was determined to be Amy's undiagnosed heart condition. So one of the girls was sentenced to only six months in a juvenile facility. Now, a Delaware Supreme Court judge overturned the conviction and the girl will walk free. Many people are outraged by this decision, so today we brought in two top lawyers to break down both sides of this case. Criminal defense attorney Sarah Azari and former prosecutor Bob Bianchi. The court says there was no reasonable way the girl could foresee the fight would lead to Amy dying of cardiac arrest. You buy that? In the state of Delaware, this is the lowest in the, in the family of homicides. So criminal negligent homicide requires a showing that a um, reasonable person could not foresee death as a consequence of the conduct and that the particular defendant didn't act in accordance with that foreseeability. Uh, these two girls plotted and planned and conspired to not do a to cheap kill. shot. Not me, to kill. Me, to do a cheap shot attack where three people pounce on a person. And I say it's foreseeable. Not necessarily that it Wrong, will happen. But not but it is slaughter. foreseeable that somebody could be Wrong, have a medical but not condition murder. and die. Do kids homicide. that age have the ability to foresee something like this? I mean, it seems like a schoolyard fight. Yeah, but right. right. In the old right. days, a, when you and I were growing up, you got a bloody nose, you went home, sucked it up, and you were done. Right. right. She wanted to take the girl down, okay? It's wrong. She was posting it all over uh, social media. It's wrong. But she did not have the intent of doing anything that could possibly you lead to death. You don't need to. Look, this is, uh, uh, uh. It's not Here's where we go off the rails. No. You don't need no, intent. It's called negligence. This was a planned attack. It was right. premeditated. Right. And that's got to mean something. Well, when you say, but, but see, we can't use the term premeditation in they the context it, of an assault. I understand. Okay? You know, the premeditation here, to the extent it's premeditation, it's the planning of an assault. It's not the premeditation that is in a murder. No, case. but what, what we're saying here is that this was not something that just it happened spur of the moment. Of course it wasn't. Of course it wasn't. Of course. And is she good for an and, assault and battery? And yes, she is. Cowardly, heinous. Wait, if it was two kids, Use Chris's example in the schoolyard fight, and God forbid somebody died from a medical condition, I would not prosecute that case. But when there was an individual who has plotted and planned a vicious attack with two other people, they're not even honorable enough to square up and do one on one, but, then, look, and somebody dies, they're going to jail. It was not foreseeable that death would occur. This girl had a rare cardiac disorder. There is no way that a girl at 16 would be expected look, as, to have a as, heart as attack. As now, wait a second. If she hit her head on the tile, if she had her head on the Faucet but that and would die? be foreseeable? Uh, yes, Listen, the yes. law has been clear in this country for years. I have prosecuted homicide cases where somebody's robbing somebody and they have a heart condition Apples and drop and dead oranges. of a heart attack. Because, Apples and oranges. But now we have those prosecutors, now we have to know the physical condition of the victim. We have to have an autopsy done. Oh, wait a minute, this person had an aneurysm. In injury. Delaware? This, that's no, where the court made the no. mistake. That's reckless manslaughter that it's foreseeable, in my opinion. The Supreme Court, in its liberal interpretation of this case, decided to now hamstring prosecutors in that state from this it, point it, forward. Well, until the law changes, I think that's what the prosecutors are going to end up doing. That's a shame. All right, now we want to hear from you. Do you think this teen's conviction should have been overturned? Sound off right now on our Facebook page. For more on these stories, you can go to CrimeWatchDaily.com. I'm Chris Hansen. If you like this story, make sure you tune in every day to Crime Watch Daily. You can find where the show airs in your city at CrimeWatchDaily.com. Watch it live or record it on your DVR and watch it at night. And to all those criminals out there, Remember, we are watching.